All right, I've arrived at the top at my casualty. I went up here, did my eight climb. I can reach him. I can see that he's been climbing the old school method in his uh, position from a scout to an end crawl, which means that this is basically the same as a, a crawl rescue. Uh, that, that's, this is the reason that we, these days we prefer that people climb in things like grillons or positioning lanyards, because then it's easy. You can just rig your lowering system or you just can lower themselves, them onto yourself, which makes a rescue a lot easier. But this little fellow over here chose to uh, use his crawl instead. So that's what we have to deal with. I've prepared my rescue bag. I can lower him straight down because that's, in this case, the easiest rescue. But first things first, I'm gonna get a little bit closer. So I'm gonna transfer over to this anchor point. I have my two cow stills connected so I can move my positioning lanyard. I stand up, move it over, sit back down. And now I'm close enough that I can reach him. Here we go. This is the position we want. I'm gonna get a little bit higher. That was a real little bit. First, I'm gonna make a little space. I can take out this cow tail. He doesn't need it. Clip it on his harness somewhere. And then I'm gonna move my rescue bag here. And then first, take out. The descender. Let's clip it in like this. Might be the right way, might be the wrong way. This side or this side. I will judge that in a second. Take out some of the rope. And then I'm going to, in this case, looking at it from here, I'm going to choose to put a barrel nut. Can you see it? You can put the barrel nut straight on his top D-ring. That means he's short, the shortest mo connection. And uh, that my lowering out, like from the counterbalance technique, lowering him out is gonna be just a, a teeny tiny bit. I could connect it to the bottom D-ring, which would make my life a lot easier, but then I would have to do casualty management after that to get him in, in a more upright position. So I'm gonna tie. The barrel nut straight onto the D-ring. Take out all the slack. Oh, that's one. Now, I said I was going to do the backup first, but the descender was on top, so I got that first. I'm going to attach the backup over here for now. And if the room is there, I'll leave it there. So I've preset this with a figure of eight knot. I'm gonna take it out. I'm going to do the same knot again. I'm curious about what you guys think of this. Having two barrel knots on the same D-ring, is that going to interfere with each other or not? What do you think, guys? Is this best practice of it, or is there a better way? I know more ways to do it, but right now I'm choosing for this. There is enough room. I'll be limiting the full distances as uh, making them as short as possible. And that's what we want. All right. Mind you, we're using all the devices upside down. So the descender is on. I'm gonna recheck it in a minute. But now at the ASAP, which is sort of easier to mess up, the arrow on here usually points up. But in this case, it points to the casualty. So I'm gonna see what the best rope path is and then to make sure that the rope runs down cleanly when it goes down like this, I make a little deviation up here. Otherwise it would load the ASAP not as nice, and this is the way the manufacturer says it's supposed to be done. So that's for the ASAP. It's connected with a properly tied barrel nut. I have my straight one with my cross, my S-band underneath, as I've shown you in the video right up there. I get the ASAP close, take out the slack, and now some more rope management. 
Okay, now I'm gonna manage the descender properly. Get him as close as possible. And like I've shown you in the other video, which you can watch up there as well, the lowering of a victim or a casualty or a, or a load, you would actually, when you use the ID in a special circumstance, you need to make, also make an extra deviation point so that the rope is guided over the rounded edge and you create some extra friction and control. That's with the regular ID. If you have the ID effect, there's a little bit of a difference, but we're talking about regular equipment right now. Cool. So my casualty is on four points, but two anchor points, one, two. But I can take out all his cow stills. So I'm gonna take out this one because it's easiest. Clip it back on the harness. And now, I should be able to lift him out the same way as with the crawl rescue and lower him to the ground. I'm ready to take him down, I've checked everything. I take out my foot loop. I thread it, in this case I'm gonna thread it into the D-ring. I'll make it as long as possible so that this little clip cannot interfere. Like so. I am going to choke it on the top D-ring. I am going through the anchor point. I put my foot in. And now before I get up, I'm gonna check my complete system and myself. I'm suspended in my Grillon. I have my backup, all the carabiners are still done up. I have a third point of contact, which I'm gonna take out from here because it's actually might get in the way of things. And I'll put it back here. I have my foot loop there. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to stand up, the same as I showed you with the crawl rescue, as you can watch there. I'm going to stand up, put my full weight in it, and then just lift him a little bit and open the, the crawl. And then I lower him into the descender. Okay, there we go. I'm going to take care not to kill him. I stand up. I lift him a little bit, open the crawl, take out the rope, close the crawl, and I just sit back down slowly. And if all goes well, he should already be suspended in the rope. As you can see, there was very little effort involved. I took care to position myself properly and stand in the foot loop. And all I had to do was just a little bit of a lift and I could undo the crawl. If I've wanted, I might have been able to just take this one off straight without taking him out of the crawl, that's also possible. But as you see, because I did a barrel knot in a top D-ring, he only went down this much. So that's what we like to see. All right, I'm going to clean up my system a little bit so I have all my gear where I want it. Check the system again. I have my bag here, I know there's knots in the bottom. Take his cow tail out, don't forget, otherwise you have to do that rescue again. I will clip it back to his harness. I open up the descender and slowly lower him to the ground. Before I go any further, I make one check. The ASAP runs freely, and that's what we like to see. As you do this stuff, you always keep checking everything, like are screw gates getting undone? Is everything running smoothly? So in this manner, I can easily lower into the ground. This rescue was sponsored by Industrieel Klimme. Beautiful training center in the north of Holland, right above Amsterdam, and they provide all kinds of working at height training.
You can come here for your GWO, your IRATA, any rope rescue training or any scenario you can think of. They have standard trainings and they build custom trainings for your company. If you need any of this beautiful climbing gear, you can come here and try it out, or you can visit the web store. Link will be in the description. So I'm gonna lower him to the ground and then my rescue team can take him off the ropes. He's on the ground. Take out that last bit of slack. There we go. And they can undo him. That's it for this video. If you like this technique, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. If you did not like that technique or you would like to see a different way to do it, leave a comment. Tell me what you would like to see or what you would do differently. I will see you in the next one. Stay connected.